case y'all were wondering. I'm pretty sure that's what the happiest dog in the world looks like. Is that right, baby? <laughs> my little buddy. He really is my, my best dog buddy. <laughs> Y'all check this out. Happy birthday, little guys. Those are the first tomato sprouts of the season and I am so thrilled to see them. You wanna see a little peek at what's going on out here in the greenhouse? My seed chaos on the table is still going strong. I've been just popping out here and starting what little I could. Bear, did you go get in the pond? You nasty dog. Um, so I have a lot of trays that nothing has popped up yet. That's fine. Um, however, here's a tray of beets. Everything's coming up really nice. I have a few cells that don't have germination in them yet, but for the most part, they look really good. You all see me touch my seedlings a lot. This is actually on purpose because whenever you're starting seeds in a controlled environment, like in a greenhouse, if the air is not moving a lot, your seedlings can be kind of weak. So anytime that I come in and I walk by these, I'm always you know, rubbing my hands across the top, which is giving some resistance. It's making them stronger. Um, let's see, what is this? Those are peppers, those aren't up yet. Those will take a little while because peppers typically do. Over here, these are another tray of peppers. These are tomatoes. These are my Wild Boar Farms tomatoes. These were the first ones that I started and I've got lots of little babies. Happy birthday. Oh, look at these guys. They'll be standing up tomorrow. Happy birthday, little cuties. So that's thrilling. Over here, let's see. I have several trays that haven't done much, but right here, these are actually leeks. And I've not really started a lot of leeks from seed indoors. I've grown leeks from like started sets that I purchased where I get my onions. Um, so this is new to me, and I'm not 100% sure how it's gonna turn out, so it's a little bit of an experiment. I also have some seeds here, some uh, tomatillos, eggplants, the tomatillos are coming up, the eggplants aren't, um, some Swiss chard, and in these little multi-cell things, I'm going to have to move some of those out pretty quickly. These are all dwarf tomatoes for my green stalks, nobody's up here yet. And this tray is almost entirely artichokes and passion flowers, so I did half and half on this. I do have some artichoke plants already in the garden that I've overwintered, so they'll probably be sprouting, they'll probably be flowering and making chokes, like, I mean, not long from now, it'll be just a few, couple months, they'll be ready. But I'm starting some new ones, and I'm hoping to put these somewhere where they can stay for a while, but I'd like to have like a whole row of artichokes to come back year after year. Um, last year we did several in the greenhouse. I don't wanna keep them in the greenhouse this year, the high tunnel. But I thought that would be a really cool thing to have a lot of, potentially be able to preserve, um, and then also maybe take to the farmer's market. I don't know, just thought it would be a cool thing. So these seeds are actually not mine. Um, my friend Daniel, his, he recently just got married and his wife moved here and so she's, she came over and started those. These are all ta also tomatoes and with these big cells is where I have like a whole bunch of seeds in one and I'll separate them out later. The drawer of tomatoes in these, I just did one plant in each cell. Things I have not started yet, I haven't started really any herbs. A lot of herbs I already have because they are perennial in my garden. Uh, so like I already have rosemary and thyme and oregano. I will start a lot of basils, but probably not for another like two weeks. I typically start those about a month before it's time to plant anything out. Now in my garden, um, I direct sow all peas and green beans. I don't start anything or any beans ahead of time. I have in the past always direct sowed my cucumbers. However, this year I'm going to start all my cucumbers from seed about three weeks before it's time to plant them out. Uh, with cucumbers and melons and squash, they really don't like their roots being disturbed. Last year I had such a bad problem with um, pill bugs 
eating my seedlings. And so this year I'm going to start them ahead of time so they can be a little more established when I put them out. I just had, I didn't really get hardly any cucumbers last year because I couldn't get any plants past the seedling stage. With squash, I have played around with starting those from seed. My experience with squash is that squash plants so hate their roots being disturbed that if you start some weeks ahead and then you disturb the roots transplanting them those plants will actually shock and stunt and if you start direct sow some the same day that you transplant the others the direct sown ones will typically overtake the transplanted ones with growth so you don't actually get ahead so i'm gonna i'm, I'm still gonna direct sow all my squash all my melons the cucumbers i'm gonna go ahead and start and then the, some of the herbs i'll start i've started some flowers already i'm going to start a lot more flowers here in the coming weeks and yeah i think that's everything i don't know there's probably something i'm forgetting everything is so pruned back and tidy the garden feels so bare just in time to <laughs> blow up with growth here's all the garlic it's looking pretty good Oh, another herb that I've got established, these chives, which they're a little puny right now. I've probably harvested them a little more than I should have, but they'll grow a lot as it starts to warm up. I was looking for another asparagus. I've had two pop up already, but not a whole lot. You know what? We should go check the other asparagus bed. Hey, bear! The male lady just came down the driveway and Bear had to go investigate. He'll come running as soon as he hears me. Oh, there he is. Come on, let's go. Oh, goodness. All right, so across the pond, we have this asparagus bed, which last year I didn't harvest anything from over here. It was still getting established. Um, and we do have deer really bad. They really don't mess with my main garden because it's right by the fence where like Gabriel is. And of course the bears out there a lot. And it's kind of the inside of our property and the way we've designed our farm is that basically any wildlife has to pass through our pastures with all of our big animals before it gets to the inside of the property which is where we put our more vulnerable animals so like chickens birds stuff like that is towards the inside and the gardens are towards the inside of the property and that really keeps the deer back because they don't want to pass through like our our cows and our alpacas and stuff like that so far it's worked but over here this is on the other side of the pond and the deer they just, they ate a lot of asparagus last year. I don't see anything popping up over here yet. Except for, oh, for a second I thought that was a puffball mushroom. It's just a really nice stone. Does anybody else, when they find a good rock, put it in their pocket? <laughs> like, that's a solid rock. I'm going to keep that one. That's a good one. <laughs> Whatever six-year-old urge that is, I never grew out of it. I, I am routinely pulling rocks and sticks out of my washing machine that were in jacket pockets or in apron pockets or whatever. Um, and it's because my boys, but I can't get onto them too hard because I do it too. You gotta keep a good rock and a good stick. Actually, I'm gonna hop out here and show you guys this because I'm sure. Yeah, here we go. Let's see. Deer tracks. Anytime it's been rainy, you can come over here and just see tons of tracks. We have this group of like five does that bed down over here. They bed down on the other side of the pond. And I see them sometimes, like if I leave my house after dark, a lot of times I'll come down the driveway and they'll hop up and, and hop over. And I mean, they're not they're not bothering anything. I mean, other than like the, the spare asparagus beds. I have my asparagus beds up by the greenhouse. They don't, they don't mess with those. Oh, that's a big one right there. Look at that. And they're all over. That is some sort of big, that's a bird print of some sort. Anyway, these are all fresh because it just rained the other day. Eventually, we'll use over here. You know, we'll get, we'll get it more established. I think once our house is built, which is gonna be like right there, 
this will be a more trafficked area. Um, and we can move over here with some different pastures and, and potentially maybe like graze the sheep over here, things like that. And then we'll be able to fence off like this asparagus bed to keep, keep it safe from our animals, but also having our animals around will protect it to some degree from the deer. That's too long down the road to really be thinking about. So the last few days, every time I let Bear out, he comes back wet up to like the middle of his belly. And I just saw him go underneath that land bridge, which makes me wonder if something, if there's not something nasty down there that he's trying to get into. Because it's not like him to go hop in the pond. I didn't think he was hopping in the pond because his back hasn't been wet, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Well guys, I'm gonna head back inside. I was in the middle of like doing a lot of baking and I've gotta get back to it. I just needed a, a sunshine break. So I hopped out to the greenhouse. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you until next time.